So the thing is, I haven't been talking too much about expensive IEMs, but I'm very happy to let you know that today I'm bucking the trend of talking about ultra cheapies to talk to you about a rather interesting high-end earphone. So you know, sometimes when you get an IEM with switches, those that promise you the ability to change the tuning of the IEM, and those really suck, especially when you take all that effort to fiddle with all those small little switches only to find out that they do next to nothing. Today's IEM in question does not falsely advertise this. Their switches work and work really well. That's right, we are talking about the F-Audio Mezzo Limited Edition. So the interesting thing about the Mezzo is that it is inspired by Leo Fender's most popular contribution to the world of music we know today. That is the Fender Stratocaster. So this guitar has inspired the likes of players such as Jimi Hendrix and more recently John Mayer. The pickups which are the bar-like things you see on the guitar, those are like the microphones that pick up the signals. For the guitar, the Stratocaster, it typically has three of them on it. As such, you'll need to use a switch to control which is in use. That truly inspired the use of switches on the Mezzo. The main pickup selector on the Stratocaster allows it to swap between pickup combinations and phase settings. Like the Strat, the Mezzo here employs the use of switches to customize the sound to the way you like it. We'll talk more about this in a bit when we dive into sound. So let's first start off with an unboxing. So the first thing that you'll notice is that the box of the Mezzo is really large. Certainly has a nice touch as this product is quite a premium one and with such a box, I do feel a little bit special. Opening the cover reveals the Mezzo itself held in its packaging with foam. I like how the IM is displayed. There is something very satisfying when it comes to removing this pair of earphones. I like the tactile feeling of the cable lifting off the foam. There is also a metal serial number card on the top right with some PCB board patterns cut into the metal. Below the Mezzo logo reveals the cable. The bottom layer just has some accessories with a booklet thingy for the rest of the boring literature. Book quality, I know that you guys know that I'm quite the magpie, and the shell of the Mezzo is simply exquisite. It gives off a very obvious Slytherin vibe, being mostly green and black, it also sparkles in the right light, and I do like things that sparkle. It has a comfortable custom universal shape, but I won't call this boring this time, as the swirly whirly patterns cover the whole chassis of the Mezzo quite cohesively. It's just really pretty. Towards the bottom of the IEM shows the serial number of your unit. Towards the top of the IEM are the highly functionable switches. It's a little small, but most of these switches are anyways, and you would probably need a Poki tool to engage the switch. I like these switches better than those that just stick out and are just located in the same location as the Mezzo. Those kind of poke my ears, but not these on the Mezzo. So inside the Mezzo are four drivers, a DD that does most of the low-end stuff, two balance armatures for the mid-range, and lastly a piezo serving as the tweeter. Of course, it comes in a two-pin termination. Cable here is called the Tone Master. It is a cool hybrid silver copper cable. You did hear me right, it's silver copper rather than silver plated copper. So it has a copper core with silver shield on the outer layer of each core. The cable continues the slithering vibes by being green and greyish in colour and is terminated to a 4.4mm termination. Ergonomics of the cable are comfortable. I'm quite happy to say that it comes with quite a functional choker as well. Fit of the Mezzo is good despite its slightly larger shell. I found them particularly comfortable. They are not too heavy and sit quite close to the ears and this helped with the overall fit balance. Sound. So before I start talking about sound of the Mezzo, I need to first discuss the switches. There are three switches on each side of the IMN and these switches mirror between the left and right side. So if you want a balanced sound, you just turn the first switch on the left. Please also make sure you do the same on the right as well so that they do sound balanced. So there are three switches. The first switch basically is on the left. It does give you a bass boost. Turn it on and you'll just get more bass. Now the middle switch adds mid-range, but I also found that it 
does add a bit of mid bass as well, just hair and on certain songs that can make it sound a little woolly. And lastly would be the treble boost and this adds more top end and sparkle making the overall signature a little bit more airy. All three switches work and are quite obvious as well. You can mess around with the numerous combinations to find your favourite. I found mine and never really changed from it. The switches does not affect the tone but rather just the volume at certain frequencies. So the innate tone of the mezzo is that this is one warm monitor that is technically proficient. It has warm but does not forsake details and transients for colorization. So this pair is really made for listening to vocals and this is easily my favorite aspect of the mezzo. Dynamics here is exciting on this pair. Bass. Rendering of bass on the mezzo is quite interesting. It, it does separate the mid bass and sub bass really well. Sub bass is actually pretty separate and well blended with the mid bass. What I mean by this is that there is obvious rumbles of the sub bass that is plentiful and authoritative, but the mid bass resonance harmonizes well with the sub bass. An example of this would be the tone of a typical Fender jazz bass. They tend to have more mid bass harmonics, but on the mezzo there is added sub bass harmonics which synergizes with the overtone, giving it more low end support while maintaining the zingy character of a Fender Jazz bass. I think that the bass here aids in the mezzo being a very dynamic IEM as well. Bass on the whole remains taut despite its more obvious larger amounts of it. This really allows you to feel the music, it's pretty groovy sounding and the bass does sound big here with also really good control. With the bass switch turned on, I hear more sub bass rumble which I quite like. Mid-range. So it does not really discriminate between male or female vocals. Both will have a heavier tonal weight and I find this pretty intimate. Coupled with the great levels of detail, you get quite a bit of nuances from vocals. I actually like how syrupy sweet vocals are on the mezzo. Vocals also have a rich body. If this was food, think of it like full cream milk that still has distinct nuances. The treble harmonics actually harmonizes very well with the mid-range, allowing instruments and vocals to occupy the space to have a very distinct edge despite its rich nature. For instruments, likewise, they have a richer quality to the tone. For example, acoustic guitars here sound like they were produced from a jumbo rather than a more common dreadnought shape. Again, despite this, it does sound precise and fast. Certainly very enjoyable. One thing to note, if you turn the mid-range switch on, you get an even more prominent mid-range. Vocals become even more forward and depending on the track you listen to, then there might be a slight increase in mid bass as well. Treble, despite its overall warm nature, the mezzo does have quite a good treble performance. Your crashes and cymbals resonate naturally with good organic decay. Extension here is also pretty amazing despite its warmth. As such, this has an airy presentation which I utterly enjoy. With the treble switch turned on, you get more treble attack that I find to be pleasant and not shrilly. I find that you get better treble definition with the switch turned on as well. And next, moving on to soundstage. When it comes to width and height, it is very fast and very tall. Think of a large concert hall, this is one aspect of the IM that I really enjoy. Depth and positioning, depth is aided by the great dynamics of the mezzo and how far the instruments are positioned is also pretty accurate. Positioning too is also very distinct, aided in the high extending treble. And next, we're going to compare it with some competing IEMs in a similar price category. First one on the list will be the Vision Years Eve. So the Vision Years Eve, it's another monitor that is dark and warm sounding, but the mezzo bears the Eve wholeheartedly. The mezzo has superior soundstage and depth and sounds more open when compared to the Eve. Also, the treble extension on the mezzo is better than the Eve. Despite its warmth, it's still pretty open sounding. It sounds bigger than the Eve. And next, versus the Fur Audio NE4. Now the Fur Audio NE4 is another IEM in the, in the ballpark of the mezzo and they feature this technology called Kinetic Bass which is an outward firing bass driver. I found that the, this Kinetic Bass thing really does increase the perception of bass at the cost of resolution and details. So it basically gives you more bass but it's kind of flabby sounding, it's not as tight as the one on the mezzo. And overall, I must say though, to be fair, the Fur Audio NE4, it has a very unique character that it's not found in other IEMs, but you need to try it. It's a very like it or not like it kind of thing. I think the vocal section is nicer on the mezzo as it is very thick and loud sounding. For the NE4, it's a bit more, it has a bit more upper mid, so it's a bit brighter. 
Um, but yeah, overall, I prefer the tonality on the mezzo rather than the Ferrario NE4. And with that said, finally in conclusion, I really enjoyed the mezzo if you did not. And finally in conclusion, I really enjoyed the mezzo and it was quite a pleasant surprise that despite its warmth, it is able to have quite a vast soundstage with intricate positioning as well. The switches here does work and I personally like the treble and bass switch turned on. With the mid-range switch turned on, I just find that it can be a little bit too forward for my taste, but you have the option to select it if that is your sort of thing. I think they have done some really good work here with the mezzo and this is an IEM that I would recommend if you're looking for something that is warm, full-bodied sounding. And yeah, and they've done a good job at that. The level of details here is really good and the resolution, it's really high as well. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Super Chunk Super Audio Show. If you like the content so far, please press the like and subscribe button right here down below. Um, also, just so you know, I have recently done some China videos where I went to China to attend a headphone show and we covered some of the new interesting releases that were shown at the show. Also, I managed to meet Chang Tong from 7 Hertz, who was very kind to let us know his thoughts on his new latest product. So you can just watch it here first at the Super Chunk Super Audio Show. With that said, I hope to see you guys soon.